And what did I see coming for to carry me home? I bet the angels coming after me, coming for to carry me. There are approximately 50,000 historic cemeteries across Texas. That's a huge number. Historic Cemetery is a cemetery that has burials 50 years of age or older. By law, cemeteries are dedicated land only for that use. They cannot be used for any other activity. Texas is blessed with the diversity of historic cemeteries, ranging from a single burial to a hillside filled with markers. The importance of preserving the cemetery history from a genealogy aspect is that residents get to know who their family members are. A lot of people don't realize that the people who are buried in these cemeteries, that they're related to them. Graves are a very important aspect of genealogical research because so often records have been lost, especially in the South, many records were burned, and, and you won't have a link to your ancestor. That's why every person's grave is important, no matter who, who it is and preservation of monuments and headstones for future generations is a link to the past. These historic cemeteries, both urban and rural, face a myriad of problems. The pollution and the foot traffic and the automobile traffic, it seems to make uh, the headstones deteriorate a lot quicker and a lot faster. You see desecration by allowing cattle to run through a cemetery. You know, there's piles of trash that have been dumped in the cemetery, just, you know, a period of no respect. In particular, Hollywood, I mean, I look at, at the, uh, you know, the natural elements, the forces of nature. Hollywood is, has a ravine, so we have some erosion problem uh, presently, uh, it, drainage issues. Back then, the graves, uh, you know, there were no liners or vaults as we know of today, so they were wooden caskets. So that's why when you go in a lot of the older cemeteries, you'll see dips or whatever, because they have collapsed. The value of these sacred places cannot be overstated. I think cemetery preservation is important because I think about the people who are buried there. Those people contributed to the building of Houston. We are standing on their shoulders and so it is up to us to remember their legacy by maintaining these cemeteries. When I go into Hollywood and I'm looking at the uh, entire cemetery, I don't have a, a, a favorite spot or a certain grave. I, I love, uh, you know, to clean any and every grave, you know, show them all a little respect. Many of our members volunteer their time to complete surveys of the graves within a cemetery as a research tool for future generations. This is very important. It's not just the preservation of the headstones, but it's the recording of the headstones. The state of Texas offers guidance for those seeking to preserve historic cemeteries. The RIP Guardian Statewide Network of Cemetery Preservation Volunteers is one of the newer programs of the Texas Historical Commission. It is uh, one of the services, one of the key services that we offer. And it's a way for cemetery preservation volunteers to meet each other, share ideas, and connect and share those statewide. Service organizations such as the Daughters of the American Revolution often support cemetery preservation. Cemetery preservation and rehabilitation fits perfectly within the DAR's objective of historic preservation, education, and patriotism. Many people think of the DAR as the Ladies Who Lunch organization when in fact we're a hands-on service organization. We love to get out and uh, participate in workshops, 
go to the cemeteries, learn how to clean the, the headstones and the monuments properly so that they can be preserved for future generations. Another resource might be your local government. It depends on how cities operate, depends on how park directors are appointed or, you know, from that perspective. But this is our history and Houston needs to claim, claim its history. We're known for tearing down buildings that we ought to hang on to and it's like here we don't want to neglect something as important as this as our forefathers that we have buried here. Historic grave markers vary from fragile sandstone to sturdy concrete. There is a large range of uh, limestone and concrete. Some have a little bit of mix of marble in them. Obviously the ones that are very ornate, those people were well to do. Uh, the ones with the plain concrete slab where they etched the name in there. Obviously those people were important to them, but it's just the different types of headstones in the cemetery that make it so unique. High style grave markers, markers like these 1936 centennial markers, to handcrafted grave markers, which are just as beautiful and show so much personality and attention and love from the people that make them. The most important thing to remember regarding grave markers is do no harm. Also avoid trespassing and destructive household products. Historic grave markers face a number of different threats and challenges. In some cases, it is lack of attention. In other cases, it's too much attention, over cleaning, or applying inappropriate treatments to the surface that damage and harm it. Some people will go straight to something that'll really clean a stone because it has that wow factor. Putting bleach on stone will instantly lighten it, but it can irreparably just damage the stone and, and you just, there's no conservator who can take it back to where it was. Shaving cream has all sorts of chemicals in it um, that can be sucked into the stone and do damage, so we definitely don't encourage um, that. The other thing people do is rubbings, and um, rubbings, anytime you're, you touch the surface of a stone, you have the potential to damage. Mirrors offer a safe alternative for reading worn inscriptions. There is also a proper way to clean these markers. Well, the first thing that you need to do when you're attempting to clean any historic stone is to make sure it's sound, to make sure it's not falling apart, doesn't have any cracks, doesn't have any crevices. After that, you want to use a lot of water in the, in the cleaning process. Historic masonry is like a sponge, and it soaks up. It doesn't seem like it would quite that much, but it really is, and so it'll soak up the material that's applied to the surface into the inside. That's why we started uh, watering the markers beforehand because we don't want to clean the inside, we want to clean the outside. So you would spray it with water, get it really nice and soaked, then put the, the cleaner on and let it sit for a few minutes. The biocides that we're using are quaternary ammonium compounds. It's very gentle. It works with the biology of the organisms and kills them and also keeps them off for sometimes up to a year depending on conditions. These products are designed specifically for historic masonry and have been tested in laboratories on all sorts of masonry. And they're good for almost any type of stone. And then just gently scrub it off with a natural bristle brush. As you start scrubbing, you notice any section of the stone kind of loosening or a crack you might not have seen because it was too dirty. You should back off, make sure that you're not exploiting a, a, a crack there. And this is a marble stone, so it's very porous, which is probably one of the reasons why it has so much lichen. Basically, they taught us to do gentle cleaning very little abrasion, and this tongue depressor works actually really well. Make sure that the stone never dries, because that would mean that the product has dried in it, and we don't want that. And then at the end, just kind of rinse it off and make sure that everything is very, very well rinsed, and then wait and see if it, if it improves over time. Biological cleaning agents work over time. So the application you see today will improve the appearance, in a week, you will see an even marked appearance. It's not the Statue of Liberty, it's not the Lincoln Mo Memorial, but it is a memorial to a man who died for his family uh, in Houston at a very historic period. One of the charming things about a historic cemetery is that it looks historic. The purpose of cleaning is very clear. You know, you want to make sure that you can read the inscription. You want to make sure that they have the best possible appearance that they can 
while maintaining that historic ambiance. Three Houston cemeteries illustrate the history to be found. The Founder Cemetery was the first cemetery that the, the city had, and it was on the outskirts, about a mile out, and that's where the first burials took place. In Olive Woods Case, there are two headstones dated 1869 and 1871, years, four or five years before the cemetery was actually uh, platted. So the organizers had, had some forethought as to how they planned that cemetery. College Park Cemetery is actually College Memorial Park Cemetery. It started in 1896. The last known burial, I think, was 1971 or 72. And since that time, it was basically ignored. You could drive down Dallas Street, the street that it fronts on, and not know that it was a cemetery. Um, it was so overgrown. The range of people buried in the cemeteries range from the movers and shakers to uh, people who were formerly enslaved to people who just did simple work here in the city, just from top to bottom, cream of the crop, to your everyday laborer are buried uh, in all of those cemeteries. You could actually use this cemetery as, a, as the basis for a curriculum of Texas history based upon the people, the experiences that they had. Signers of the Declaration at Bayer, people who survived the runaway scrape, there were signers of the Texas uh, Declaration of Independence, as well as uh, the first Commodore of the Texian Navy. We have World War I and World War II veterans. We have Buffalo soldiers that are uh, buried at, at uh, Olive Wood and at College Park as well. I have been you know, researching some of the early burial practices of uh, African Americans, and I can see a lot of it uh, in Olive Wood, uh, inverted writings, uh, seashells, you will see a lot of pipes. And I really think that Olive Wood, you know, when it was originally platted in about 1875, sometime I think, why was it, why, why did they pick that location? And I think the water, you know, from the bio, bisects uh, a bio, and all of that had a lot to do with the, the life thereafter, or, or the soul returning back to where it originated. The DAR does focus on revolutionary patriots' graves, and we are very fortunate here in Texas to have many patriots buried in our state. We're very proud of the research that we've done and recorded. Uh, for the African-American patriots, the Hispanic patriots, and the American Indian patriots. They were all a very big force in the formation of our country. The other piece of history that I find very interesting is the, really the story of the racial prejudice that created the problem for the cemetery since the 70s. No one cared about it. People were there that should have known better. That's a very sad thing, a very um, difficult part of the history of America and you know even that story I think is worth saving so it doesn't get repeated. It's important for those interested in cemetery preservation to utilize available resources. Groups that are participating in the program here in Houston which we really do appreciate those groups support have an opportunity to say to the city, this is what we've been doing, and a way for them, the city, to respond in turn and continue to give assistance. One of the things we really wanted to put here was to change the fencing out for this park. You know, it's a small piece, but it changes the, the cemetery dramatically. And we're very happy to have the group out here working on the headstones. We are by no, no means understand how to maintain headstones, but we can do the grass and we can make, the, make, the, make it look park setting. It's opening this conversation and having open dialogue with local volunteers, statewide volunteers, genealogy groups, county historical commissions. We found a lot of new friends through our, our standard constituency. And then we've also found new friends just because they found us and our services on, on the internet. The backbone of cemetery care is the volunteers. I spent probably on average about maybe 16 to 
uh, 20 hours at Hollywood just last week because the weather was so nice and uh, just alone by myself, uh, me and the weed eater. <laughs> Preservationists from the neighborhood started in 1983 of trying to get an organization together to start taking care of the site and so forth. So there's been cleanups and the uh, probation department, the uh, juvenile kids have come in and uh, done some work there over the years as well. And we've got a good set of volunteers that come out once a month with a little bit of money that we've raised. We also now have a maintenance crew that comes out once a month also to help us mow. And all of that has led us to the point where now I think we've got the majority of the available above ground headstones are visible. You know, 40 years since the 70s, this is the first time that you can say that for the entire five acre track. Across the state, we have over 75 RIP Guardian volunteer groups working, and it's growing tremendously. So 75 volunteer groups working one-on-one -on -one with those is a drop in the bucket, but it's a huge drop in a big bucket. Many stories remain to be discovered. For years, I wondered what pulled me to that cemetery, and I was researching my mom's side of the family and looked at a death certificate, and Adam Wilson, my uncle, born, uh, buried in Olivewood Cemetery. I, it was a total surprise to me, buried in 1925. As a child, I would visit cemeteries with my grandmother. We would go every Sunday, and it was a very social event. I didn't know much about my father's family, so as an adult, I met a distant cousin who took me to a cemetery that we had to walk over a fence through the brambles and in this field was the link that I needed to join the DAR on my father's side. I was just reading something that said our heritage is our past, our legacy is our future, and the present is our responsibility. And uh, one thing that, that I really always think about is a lady that died last year and she spent so much time, you know, on the history of some of the people that were in, buried in Hollywood and, and her phrase was, you know, the first generation knows, the second generation remembered, and the third generation forgot. So I'm, I'm one of those that refuse to just forget. to carry